we will talk about incremental accepts. And this is the optimization that allow us to send one command at a time from the a proposer to an acceptor. And also, we'll end up also by having incremental decides. Once we do, do these two optimizations, we are now having a complete algorithm. Okay, so let's start. Let's talk about incremental accepts. And here is our situation. Let us look to the first accept. The first accept comes after a proposer does a, a prepare and sends a prepare message to acceptors. So that is the prepare message. And then he gets back from each acceptor a promise. That's what happens here. And when he gets a promise from a majority, he adds the command to the current sequence and sends the current sequence to the acceptors. And our goal is to avoid sending the whole sequence, the current sequence to the acceptors. This we call um, trim accept. So the idea is basically not to send the whole sequence, but to send to the acceptor what the acceptor doesn't know. That's why we say that an accept message contains a suffix p s and an offset offs, from which an acceptor q can recreate the sequence. So what the acceptor does, it truncates its current accepted sequence to the offset and appends the suffix that it got from the proposer. That's what it does here. And p keeps track of the length L for which prefix of Q's accepted sequence is identical to prefix of its current sequence. Basically what the proposer does, it tries to keep track of what is a knowledge of the different acceptors. And this will be stored in the array S with a field for each acceptor. So this is the basic scheme, but we are going to distinguish between the first accept message in round N and subsequent accept messages in the same round. So the first thing the acceptor has to do is when it tries to acquire knowledge from each acceptor, QI. And by this, I mean what is the current QI's uh, accepted sequence and the current QI's decided sequence. And we have always an invariant that an acceptor always have an accepted sequence that is longer or equal to the decided sequence. So what does it do? When it sends a prepare message, it sends with it its own knowledge about what is decided. Okay? VD of the proposer P. So what the acceptor does then, it sends back a promise. This promise tells the, the acceptor what is the current round number it can accept things in, what is the suffix of the accepted sequence that P doesn't know. And also it sends back the length of its decided sequence. So that is what happens at the prompts. So we're still talking about the first accept. This is the accepted suffix that P doesn't know. And this is its knowledge about the sequence that is decided. So when an acceptor gets a promise from Q, it now can store this information about that specific Q. So it stores information about the length of the decided sequence that Q knows of. It says acceptor Q has accepted that much of its uh, prefix. And after it got a promise from a majority, that is this part, it looks and sees what knowledge does each acceptor has. And so what it does here, it updates its knowledge of that acceptor and it sends the suffix of VC, its current sequence, that the acceptor doesn't know 
and also the position, the start of that suffix. Each acceptor has different lengths of what it has accepted before. So, again, what is we do with first promise? Promise contains now the decided promise contains a length of the decided sequence of Q and a suffix from Q that the proposer P does not know. A proposer selects the max suffix and adds to its VD plus the any additional commands. So this is about the acceptor that have sent a promise. And now, but what about acceptor that the proposer did not receive a promise from yet at least? So this is a situation where we're talking about acceptors after a majority has responded, if any. So here what we have. Normally, we again update our knowledge about the acceptor. So this is says that the acceptor has that much knowledge of the current uh, sequence at the proposer. And it sends to those acceptors what has been um, proposed, which is basically the suffix of um, VC and the lens from where to start to add the suffix. It updates the knowledge that it knows about the acceptor. And if LC is not equal to zero, it sends a decide message to Q. So here, what we do with first accept other acceptors. Proposer P waits until it receives a promise message from Q before sending first accept message to Q. It needs to do this because it does not know what is the knowledge at Q. So receiving a promise synchronizes P's knowledge about Q. That's why it has to wait before sending the first accept. Because until then, the proposer does not know what the acceptor has. If subsequent has been chosen before P received a promise from Q, then P must send the side message to Q after its first accept. Okay, so this is was, uh, what we have seen here. This is where we send the side message to that acceptor because it means that the sequence has already been chosen if it's not equal to zero. So optimization of uh, accept after first accept. So subsequent accepts message will be handled quite simply. So let this is, let M1 be the first accept, accept sends N and the sequence V1. The second message, we have accept and the sequence V2. This is, was the original algorithm. We know that M1 is sent before M2 from P to Q. P knows that at the time when Q processes message M2, Q has already accepted V1 or blocked the round because it, it promised for higher rounds. We also know this because we have FIFO links between proposer and acceptors. Therefore, P will send only the suffix VS. VS is a suffix of the sequence after V1. So this is the suffix. Oh, the suffix of V2, that is the increment after V1. And we'll send, of course, the offset so that so that the acceptor knows 
where that suffix begins. So here is after first accept. This is a behavior, uh, the acceptor. So if P, if the promise is equal to N, we update our number round of accepted sequence. And if the offset is less than the currently accepted, the length of the currently accepted sequence, we update our accepted sequence by taking the prefix of the current accepted sequence and we add the new commands. And then we send to we send to the proposer accept message with the length of the sequence it has accepted. And I think that is more or less it. So here we have all the optimizations that we have done. This is now the accept message. If we just remember, we have to distinguish between two cases, cases of acceptors before a majority is reached. This is this code. And a case for acceptors after majority is reached, then we have also to send a decide. This finishes the accept message optimization. Now let us do one more optimization. We can always see that the decided sequence is actually always a prefix of the accepted sequence. But each replica stores both VA and VD even though they are highly redundant. We saw that because of the FIFO links it always holds that VD is a prefix of VA. So the decided sequence at an acceptor is a prefix of the accepted sequence at that acceptor. Therefore the sequence VD can be replaced with an integer LD and actually VD is just a prefix of the accepted sequence. Here is a condition we just mentioned. We don't have the sequence VD as explicitly represented but we keep track, track of it as a prefix. Here we do that as you can see and whenever we want to send VD we send this information, okay, the suffix of VA and LD, and whenever we want to decide on VD as a sequence, we decide on the prefix of VA up to LD. It is completely possible to remove the need to store the sequence at the proposer and the accepted sequence separately. By updating the local replica, this is the proposer, the replica, the proposer directly, instead of sending message to itself, it is possible to actually to merge the current uh, sequence at the proposal with the accepted sequence. And we let this to the students to implement the detail. So it's an exercise. Now the last thing we would like to do is that we would like to deliver one command at a time. So trigger one command at a time and this as decided command. So currently every decided sequence is handed to the application in its entirety. Probably it make makes sense to change the API so decide now will decide on one command at a time. So we get stream of decided commands instead of, the, of getting sequences. So on the side we just go into basically a loop and if L is larger than LD, this is what we know until now. 
then we trigger the command at ld ld plus one and so on until uh, we decide on all the new commands so this picture shows actually the final algorithm we have just described that before and we have seen that also before and that algorithm is actually now the final algorithm for sequence Paxos to summarize we see that prepares and the length of decided sequence a promise sends a suffix of what is the accepted sequence is an accept sends a suffix of what the proposer knows that the acceptor does not know you can see it here and here and the accepted message just only gives the length of the accepted sequence and the decide just gives the length of what is decided and I didn't show here the final optimization that we saw and the decide could now incrementally decide one command at a time so we have developed a complete and efficient abortable sequence consensus algorithm I didn't show in the last slide what happens in case of abort. Abort was like before, things can be aborted, and a propose and the proposer actually retries with higher um, round number and possibly using omega, the eventual leader election, to guarantee that at most of the time there is one leader. And that gave us the sequence Paxos, a variant of multi Paxos. This algorithm satisfies sequence consensus specification. Most of the time, it needs one round trip to decide on a command. And the algorithm works also in the fair recovery model, where processes can crash and come up again. As long as they come a finite number of times, they are correct processes. And uh, this can happen by having the acceptor storing the accepted sequence, which include the decided sequence, the current round number of the accepted sequence, stores its promise. And each proposer should include a global uniquely identifier identifier in each message or each command to guarantee uniqueness of command so that we command will not be duplicated that's it so what is next we now you can think of yourself that how to implement a total order broadcast we are going to have some unit this will be trivial or replicated state machine but until now the number of processes that we assume in our system were were known and fixed the next lecture will show how to dynamically add and remove processes to our system this is needed for making sure that there is always enough number of processes running in the system so that we have a majority of the nodes available to guarantee availability and also when you want to update software in these machines. This is a topic of uh, the next lecture and it is a topic of reconfiguration. Thank you.